Well, today we're going to talk about reopening schools fully and the consequences and the, the, the advantages and disadvantages of reopening schools and, um, and some, of the, some of the things that we need to look at and consider. So there's two major drivers, as I see it, um, and as a lot of my colleagues around the world has, have talked about. One is economics, okay? And um, we all know that if, uh, if schools close, um, that's a huge part of the workforce in our country. Um, if teachers don't go to, 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 to work, um, uh, uh, they don't go and spend money with businesses. We all know that um, this uh, school, going, getting kids back to school, definitely affects um, our economics. Um, there were close to 80 one million dollars, 81 billion dollars spent on school supplies last year. And so when you couple that with uh, teachers not going back to school, um, parents uh, not being able to uh, go to work because the, the, teach, the kids are at home and somebody has to watch the kids and, and on and on. Um, this um, going back to school is definitely um, affects the economics of our country. And so we got to look at that. And it's hard, it's a hard decision to make. Um, when, we, when we look at single parents, uh, that um, if they, they, they can't stay at home and watch their kids and not work because they won't be able to pay their bills. So um, they are, despite the fact that some of these um, single parent uh, children may have comorbid conditions, asthma and other things, uh, their parents need them to be in school. And of course, uh, we know that could present other problems. So this, this uh, going back to school, the economics of going, children going back to school is a major factor that we have to look at and we have to, we're considering. The second one is child welfare, um, the learning of the child. Um, it, it, we all can uh, intuitively understand that children not being in school is going to affect their learning uh, long term. And also their mental uh, and emotional well-being. Neuroscience has shown forever that young children and adolescents, um, that period of time, that period of growth is when their, their social skills and how they deal with things, um, uh, adverse problems, the ACEs scores, um, all of those things come into play uh, during this critical period of when their uh, children are young adults, uh, young, young children and young adolescents. So, um, so we're dealing with um, not just learning, but we're also dealing with mental health and emotional health. And we all know that uh, mental health is a big factor in our, in anybody, in any human being's life. And um, the, uh, the long-term effects of, of, uh, of interrupting that could be a problem for us. And so we wanna, we wanna take those things into consideration when we're talking about uh, sending, our school, sending our kids back to school full-time or not sending them back to school full-time. Israel sent their kids back to school. They did it. They, uh, the numbers were down. Uh, the the COVID-19, uh, it was at the all-time low. Things were going well. They made the decision to send the kids back to school. And um, it was a disaster. And so we have to take uh, note of that. And we did take note of that. There were two studies that were done. One was done in Chicago. 
um, uh, and it was written up in JAMA. And listen to this. What it showed was that children five years or less carry a viral load 10 to 100 times that of an adult. 10 to 100 times of an adult. And so we have these little we have these little kiddos that are carrying that are that are positive that are, if they become positive they can carry up to a hundred times what an adult would. The problem with that too is that they're asymptomatic. They may have very mild symptoms. They may not have any symptoms, but their viral load is a hundred times that anywhere from 10 to 100 times that of, a, of an adult. When the child comes home and um, they've been at school, okay, and around other children that may or may not have this virus, or, or, or let's say does have the virus and they, and they contract it, and they bring it home to mom, dad, the other kids in the home, if they have grandparents living at the home, they're what's considered an infectious vector, the infectious vector. The child isn't really showing any symptoms, but they're spreading the virus. They're shedding this virus to the rest of the family. That study helps us to understand the results of what happened in Israel. Secondly, the study that was done in Italy showed that children 14 and above can transmit and spread the virus even more uh, quickly than an adult can spread to another adult or an adult can spread to a, another child. And so when you look at the infectivity of this virus from, a, from, a, from an adolescent to others, we have to stop and think about that. Um, how dangerous that could be to our society, to our country, if we have those two studies that have been done and shown that this virus can be spread pretty quickly. In fact, it could cause uh, a, a major shutdown. Um, but again, we, we're looking at learning, mental health, um, emotional health versus health, I mean death, uh, critical uh, children in the hospitals, potentially, potentially. Um, we have to look at that. But the, but the teachers have said, okay, we're willing to do this. We're willing to bring the kids back, but we need the resources. We need to be able to test. We need to be able to contact trace. And um, I think we all know that in our country that there's been kind of a down uh, play on testing. There, there has been, we know that. We've heard that from our president. There's also, when you look at contact tracing, that takes um, significant manpower. It takes a lot of people, a lot of people that know what to do and a answer, que ask questions and, and, and do a lot. There's a lot behind contact tracing. You have to have the manpower and you also have to have the resources to carry that out. All things considered, um, the, we, I don't have the answers um, and, and, and things change from, from, from one day to the next. Now, right now in our, in, in our state, the numbers are going up. Uh, what does that mean? What will happen next week? But at the end of the day, let's think about this. What 16 year old is going to wash their hands every 30 minutes or less at school, wear the mask all day, stay six feet, away from their schoolmates all day long, who's going to do that? Where does that happen? And then when you think about the, 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 um, the little ones, the, the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine year olds, 
are they going to wear a mask all day and wash their hands and um, and and keep uh, social? Are they going to social distance? We don't. There's adults uh, that can't do that, by the way. And 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 my again, my role as a um, healthcare provider is to provide you with information for you to go then into your go to the school system, go to the superintendent or the school system or the wherever you need to go to feel comfortable with whatever decision you have. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to know more information, subscribe to our channel or send us comments and we'll get back with you. Thanks and have a good afternoon.